Why is evolution controversial anyway? I think it's controversial because there are religious beliefs about creation that people hold very dearly. And people look at science and evolutionary science as a threat to what they have been taught to believe. People are being told, first, you have to choose between faith and science. You have to choose between, especially, Christianity and evolution. They're being told, well, it's only fair to give both points of view. It's only fair to uh, teach evolution and balance it with creation science or intelligent design theory or something like that. That sense of fairness doesn't exist in science. It is not particularly a, a situation where you get to express your idea just because you want to. Science is a rather brutal competition of ideas. In science, ideas are supported by evidence, and that evidence has to be peer-reviewed, and it has to be repeatable, and it has to be testable. In 1925, the legal battle commonly referred to as the Scopes Monkey Trial created a firestorm around teaching evolution and Darwin's origin of species. Not much had changed by the 1960s. I first read The Origin of Species the summer after I graduated from high school. I had a job uh, lifeguarding at a swim club, and I was dating a young lady um, who liked to believe that the young men she was interested in were deep. But the truth is, during that summer, I thought it was the most boring book I read the whole time. But there was one thing about that book that kept my attention, and that is that every time somebody saw me reading it, they warned me about the book. They said it was dangerous. They said I should be careful. I never really understood the reason. I never understood the source of that anxiety. At Wheaton College, an evangelical Christian school in Illinois, it's difficult for many students to reconcile religion and science in their lives. Nathan Baird, a geology major, has struggled with this challenge since childhood. As a kid, I had the questions of, well, how did God create the Earth? Well, let's go back to Genesis 1, you know, and let's read the account. And it's, you know, God formed it. Uh, he, he separated the expanses. He, get, he created day and night. But my mind wants to know the details. It wants to know what happened. Or, you know, did God just, you know, all of a sudden in his hand there was, you know, some stuff. There was the earth. There was material. That's what I wanted to know. Those questions are not addressed in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And in evangelical and fundamentalist religious denominations, only a literal interpretation of the Bible is supported. I admit that I start with biblical glasses. I start with the Bible. I believe the Bible's a history book, and when I put on those glasses, I look at the evidence, and I believe I can consistently interpret it. I believe that I can logically defend it. I believe the Bible makes sense of the evidence. We need not allow ancient texts, even though we understand them as sacred, to enslave us as far as how we think and how we um, view the world around us. Ancient texts may offer timeless wisdom, but most faith communities accept newer scientific theories, including evolution. It's like the best kept secret in this whole controversy is that Catholics and mainline Protestants made their peace with evolution decades ago. And that there are many ways that Christian and Jewish theology have accommodated evolution just like the earth going around the sun was accommodated by religion when that scientific discovery came about. So part of it is just getting people to understand what evolution is and that it's not in conflict with faith. Although most Jews, Protestants, Catholics, and other religious people embrace evolution, each year a number of college students in biology professor Ken Miller's class ask the same question. 
You say you believe in God. Well, what kind of God? And I say that my religious belief is entirely conventional. I'm a Roman Catholic, a very traditional kind of religious person, and it surprises students very often that anyone could say that that kind of very traditional, conventional religious belief could be compatible with evolution. The science majors at Wheaton College would not be surprised. Many have struggled with reconciling evolution and their religious belief, and each has given these ideas considerable thought. Christians need to understand the theory of evolution. We can't have that many idiots out there in science. That's just not possible. So for a Christian to point their finger at a scientist and say you're wrong without having any understanding of what they're talking about is laughable. Just as if a scientist laughs at someone's theology and who's never cracked the Bible at all, again, it's the same thing. You can't do it one way or the other. The Bible is not wrong, it, you know, but we don't have to read it as a scientific document. When I read Genesis, I read about God's relationship to us as human beings and how we've fallen short of what we're supposed to be and things like that. I don't look for, you know, DNA mutations and, you know, stuff like that. That's just, you can't expect that. So not only was Darwin right about the origin of species, and not only was Darwin right about the mechanisms of evolutionary change, but there's nothing about those origins or that mechanism of change which goes against religious belief. And therefore, I sort of find this absolutely wonderful consistency with what I understand about the universe from science and what I understand about the universe from faith.